<laughs> so um, we have this interesting uh, research on uh, on Ethereum uh, uh, that is about to uh, to create DApps and startups without founders, so without need to, to, to trust founders and totally anonymity. This is why we're working on for, for a, a more than a year. And it, it's an interesting research. So it, it's something that have to be to be talked and to be tried to do. So to, to, to understand our research, uh, we have to think about what makes decentralized network unique. So what the killer app of the decentralized network? That is uh, the censorship resistant part. So that is the, um, to, have, to, to reach this, we, we need the anonymity as much as possible. So no account, no personal info stuff. Um, they, they have to be unstoppable. So no well-known hosts as much as anonymous as possible. Um, with the uh, an open source uh, code, so anyone can verify and join, and uh, especially the part of community with driven governance, so no owner, so everyone can can join the code too, and uh, and uh, with the proposal and stuff. And uh, the most important part is the crypto economics, because blockchains are crypto economics platforms, so math and no philosophy, basically. And uh, uh, to understand better this, uh, the best example is what uh, uh, Vitalik said in, uh, in the last DevCon, um, that uh, uh, cryptography is well enough to uh, prove things without assumption about behavior. So like tracking things, tracking data, and this kind of stuff. The crypto economics uh, is, uh, uh, the killer, uh, is the killer app uh, to prove uh, uh, things without minimal assumption about the participant. And uh, so um, in, in our opinion, what we want to search on is the idea to um, accelerate the transition of dApps uh, to uh, reach this kind of, of killer application. So to, um, to let people to interact each other without know each other, without trust each other, and uh, in uh, dApps without need to trust the issuer, without an issuer as possible, and without need to trust the issuer. And uh, so everyone knows that dApps are the big, the next big things in tech. Uh, this is universally approved from uh, uh, here in Italy to the Silicon Valley, to VCs, to everyone now. Uh, but uh, we are in an experimenting stage. So we are trying to find killer application on top of the web tree. Uh, so the web tree is, the, is the, the web of dApps on top of Ethereum. And uh, uh, in our opinion, is not only about the use case. Uh, because we, we need to reach uh, some kind of uh, um, improved, improved and uh, uh, shared standards. Um, to improve security and verifiability of, uh, of applications. Um, we experienced the, the first wave of dApps. Uh, they are basically a uh, smart contract for backend, uh, the front end uh, deployed in distributed uh, uh, system like PPFS, Warn, uh, or, or in some cases in the web too, so in cloud, and the, the DNS to reach the application. And uh, right now we are passing from the first wave of dApps, the second wave of dApps, that basically they added the DAO, so the Decentralized Autonomous Organization System. But we are still in early days on DAOs too. Um, because right now, uh, DAOs are basically, um, no, we'll talk about it later. So the FUD, uh, fear and sentiment and that about dApps today, that uh, um, that make it very difficult to develop, uh, uh, that uh, um, take away users to use the app, to trust the app's ecosystem, uh, is uh, um, that we, for now, are not reaching uh, uh, this core concept that uh, uh, Ethereum and Decentralized Network have. So anonymity in the apps, uh, yes, 
but we are not sure if you are not if we are anonymous in the IP, for example, because uh, uh, some dApps are in the web too, and so they can track us, they can uh, uh, censor us. For example, sometimes it's happened that the um, country asks to dApps uh, owner to uh, censor uh, some people from some countries and stuff. They are stoppable uh, for now, not totally because Easter can fail. So if you faster can uh, uh, forget or censor the front end, for example, uh, the DNS can uh, censor the front end, and yes, the back end, the back end, so the smart contracts are still there, but this is for nerds if we don't have the front end and the DNS part. Um, open source code, yes, the back end, but for nerds, and uh, there is some kind of centralized developing right now in DApps uh, based on the teams. So teams can develop their dApps, and uh, and so they, if they have some uh, ideas, uh, uh, for example, from the um, uh, what happened from the, sing the single collateral die to the to, to the multi collateral die, that I oppose to it, uh, but uh, I can do it. I can't do it. Nothing. Um, you can vote. Um, the governance is another uh, issue to solve because uh, right now DAO's standard is about. Uh, that the, the team of the owner of the DAP can propose things, uh, uh, and you can only vote, uh, but you can't propose. Or in other way, uh, in other kind of, of DAOs, uh, you can have uh, um, some governance opportunity only in a specific small part of the uh, of the application. And uh, about the crypto economic platform, hell yes, we are on top of the two. We are not on top of Trump. So. This is this part is okay, but uh, um, okay. I, I I was not um, very um, angry with DAPs, uh, uh, or I'm the bad guy that tells you DAPs are not good. DAPs are very way good, like it is today, because it's a way better than the web two. But what uh, we want to try to challenge is the idea that uh, we are on top of Ethereum and we can do more than this. So we are focusing on our research to push a new way of DAPs uh, there are <clears throat> that respect all of these core values. And so uh, they are their and their token are more like Ethereum itself. Uh, to figure it out, what's the problem? Uh, is that basically the main point of failure of DApps is the dependence from the issue. So the, uh, you can see the image because I, I, I can see in the screen, in the, the shot, the, the no. image of the slide. I okay. cannot see it. Not at the moment. Oh, ah, okay, they are loading. So, um, uh, in this image, uh, this fantastic black image, um, there is uh, <laughs> the Pied Piper team from uh, the, the movie Silicon Valley. And uh, so they are startup, they are the team that uh, created the dApps, the DAP. And uh, to solve uh, the dependency from um, a team, we have to solve uh, issues like uh, who owns the front end? Who can decide for the front end? Who can decide for the smart contracts? How we can uh, uh, improve the smart contracts we're developing and uh, bug fixing without having to fork it? And this kind of stuff, and we are working on it. So, what we want to achieve uh, is uh, achieving community driven startups without foundry, founders, where they can develop, use it, be founded, and they can be in, uh, improved uh, by anonymous people without need to trust each other and without need of off-chain stuff. So basically, uh, we reach uh, uh, the same image uh, before, but with Meme uh, and not in their head. I don't know why this doesn't work, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> the show must go home. And <laughs> no, this, this is very important. Uh, I, I, ah, okay, okay. Yeah. So um, connection problems. 
Ah, uh, you think it's my connection? Or, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in Italy now, so connection are terrible here, so. Hmm. Uh, at the state of the, of the DAPS ecosystem, uh, today we can see only this part of, of the iceberg. But there is a ton of opportunity if we can uh, um, explore uh, the hidden part of it. And uh, we are trying to accelerate the research and development uh, to solving uh, this kind of point of failure um, to, disco to discover new killer apps in the web tree. And uh, uh, working on it, we discovered that uh, uh, with uh, um, with this idea, we can accelerate the, the developing of uh, dApps like never before solving this problem. And another interesting thing uh, is that uh, we can create uh, tokens uh, in a financial pr perspectives that are unstoppable and they are not dependent from the issuer, like Ethereum. And this is very interesting in the financial part here. Um, who know DAOs, okay, and DAOs like they are today. So, um, imagine if uh, in a DAO, people anonymously can vote and propose all of the backend parts, so smart contracts, the frontend, the token inflation and deflation, the community asset management, the, even the governance rule, without, without needs to fork the dubs or trust a small group of issuer that can fork, change things, developing it, and so on. So um, in this case, we want to reach this goal that voting tokens in this kind of case, for example, will become a, as much as possible something like a real share of unstoppable protocol. So we don't need in the future anymore um, to open a company or a foundation. And um, now it's time that, that Marco will explain you how is this about. But before, um, I want to uh, share our mission and our uh, way to think the developing and the R&Ds in this field, that uh, we think every part of this, uh, uh, of this idea that we developed um, designed to be used by people since the, since the beginning who don't need to trust each other. And this is our challenge. So Marco, it's your time. Nice okay, I will share my screen. Thank you, Alessandro. Okay, so I think you can see me. Yes, I will take my camera on again. Okay, so uh, what Alessandro was talking about? Alessandro was talking about the introduction of our, of our protocol, which we call a DFO, Decentralized Flexible Organization, which is the improvement of the DAO protocol. Uh, flexible means that uh, all the organization, all the D apps we, uh, we want to build uh, must be uh, resilient and uh, censorship resistant. And uh, we think we uh, found uh, a kind of equilibrium, if you want, to uh, keep this, uh, to, to, to let this to be possible for everyone. So for example, let's take a closer look to the actual state of art of the Web 3.0 and the classical Web 2.0. In Web 3.0, we have smart contracts that are monolithic softwares, which can be sealed on the blockchain. And once uh, they are sealed, they cannot be changed. So it means that if you have a, a huge smart contracts with a lot of business logic and uh, uh, there is a bug, the entire smart contract must be forked uh, to a new one. So you cannot 
cannot recover the, all the working parts of the smart contract. Uh, just because for a simple error, for example, or a stupid uh, mistaking or misunderstanding, um, you have to uh, transfer to fork uh, your entire application. Uh, in the Web 2.0, um, there is this a brand new approach called microservices approach, and uh, we uh, just uh, um, exploited it to um, and bring uh, and brought it to the to our to the web 3 point, uh, web 3.0 uh, world uh, and so we um, we uh, we bu we built um, the apps the centralized application which use this uh, microservices approach so every functionality of your decentralized application is inside the single smart contract and all the smart contract Co cooperate with, with between them to create, of course, uh, the, the the more complex logic of the entire D app. So from the monolithic uh, one approach to the uh, splitted and interchangeable uh, microservices approach, all inside the uh, blockchain. So uh, everything is uh, public, everything is censorship resistant, everything is secure, and so on and so far. Uh, so, uh, what is a DFO? DFO is just a bunch of smart contracts where every single smart contract has uh, a, a part of the functionality of the entire global uh, application. And uh, uh, the, the user will interface just with one of these smart contracts that we call the proxy. And the proxy will, uh, um, will interact with the, all the other delegates smart contracts to, uh, of course, implement all the business logic. Of course, there are mandatory functionalities or smart contracts or microservices you can call uh, how you want. And, of course, uh, optional functionalities. The mandatory functionalities are, of course, mandatory to let everything work. The optional functionality of, uh, functionalities of a DFO are, of course, the functionalities which implement the business logic of that specific decentralized application. If there is a bug, if someone want to improve the protocol or the, or the uh, decentralized application, uh, it can propose to the community to uh, introduce a new smart contract, which, of course, which, for example, replaces the bugged one, and all the community, uh, by voting, using a voting token created with the DFO, uh, can uh, vote to accept or refuse that uh, improvement. So the governance is totally community driven and is of course totally resilient to uh, to problems uh, for two reasons. First of all, uh, all the participants are anonymous and uh, you can vote just if you uh, um, have uh, some voting tokens of the DFO you created. And of course, uh, you will always have the source code of the smart contracts always available because we um, also resolve the problem to have a resilient backend, but we also um, introduced the new way to uh, uh, have all the front end of the application uh, always available and censorship resistant, saving uh, um, on chain, directly on chain, all the uh, source code, all the uh, web application code of the front end directly on the blockchain in uh, um, a kind of uh, uh, concatenated base, Santa, base, base 64 chunks, uh, which will compose entirely the, 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 the code of the application. And of course, we can also save the source code of the smart contract in this way to avoid every kind of sensor, uh, censorship uh, events, uh, which uh, um, will... Um, which can be uh, possible in the centralized world. Uh, world. Uh, we use it, of course, ENS, Ethereum Name Services, to uh, let every DFO uh, web application to be always available in the classic centralized way or in the new decentralized way we invented, uh, as I said, um, using a ch a chunked base 64 uh, concatenated uh, um, informations inside the chain. So 
to uh, better understand what we did, we want to, to show you the, this web application that we called DFO Hub. DFO Hub is a DFO, so uh, as I said, a bunch of smart contracts with the front end, of course, uh, which can let you create uh, other DFOs. So a DFO which creates other DFOs. And uh, through this decentralized application, you can manage, watch, see, uh, interact, and vote for every DFO. For example, here we have two, two DFOs. Uh, the, the first one is of course, is of course DFO Hub. So you can uh, you can manage DFO Hub direct directly from DFO Hub. Uh, so it's in a kind of record, um, meta recursion way. So what is a DFO? Uh, a DFO, of course, is uh, a, de a decentralized autonomous organization, but more powerful, which can uh, let you do a lot of stuff. Let's see that we have, for example, the, the, the voting token of the, this DFO, which uh, actually is called BIDL, and this total supply, and all the information which let, uh, which let every DFO to work. Uh, as we said, every DFO has a bunch of functionalities. There are mandatory functionalities and custom functionalities. For example, in DFO Hub, we said that the, 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 the main goal of this DFO is to create other DFOs. And for this, this particular DFO uh, called DF, DFO Hub had the functionality called Deploy DFO, which of course can let you deploy DFO. So you can uh, query this functionality, which is a smart contract, and of course you can create uh, your DFOs automatically. We can, for example, see the source code of these smart contracts, which represent this functionality. We have, of course, the classical uh, smart contract uh, can, we can see on Etherscan. Uh, we have all the information about the functionality or smart contract, but we also can see the source code of these uh, smart contracts. So we can see uh, in a totally transparent way how we can um, how we can manage and uh, how we. Um, how a DFO is made to be extremely sure uh, no one uh, can introduce some uh, scammy, uh, scammy stuff inside the functionality, which can, for example, steal my, my ethers or something like that. Uh, so what about, for example, uh, let's let's say, for example, I can I want to change this uh, functionality, which is called the check survey result. Uh, check survey result is a particular mandatory fun functionality of DFO, which uh, can receive uh, the address of a, a proposal to change something and uh, will uh, return to you true if the proposal passes or false if the proposal is not passing. So in the FO, I can propose a brand new way to do the uh, check survey result. So I can edit it and clicking on the change button, a new proposal, a new uh, proposal wizard uh, is created. And I can, of course, edit the code right here. When I am ready to have, uh, when I edited the functionality, I can, the, the, the publish button will be available. And when I click the publish button, uh, this smart contract will be, uh, will trigger a proposal uh, that every token holder of this DFO can vote to accept or refuse. Let's take a closer look. For example, for you, I uh, already created a new proposal, which I, uh, which will uh, uh, replace the check survey result. So let's take a look at the code from the FO Hub. You can access, uh, you can access to the uh, difference between the original. Uh, actual uh, check survey result functionalities, which has this code here, and the new one. So everyone before to vote can see if the functionality is good or not. For example, in this case, I um, I replaced all the uh, actual business logic with a more scammy part, just to to let you see. Uh, for example, here uh, I, I wrote, "Hello, I'm uh, I'm a scammer." So I want that every proposal of this DFO can pass uh, automatically without votes. 
So if I have a smart guy, if I am a smart guide, of course, I will uh, not vote to accept this functionality. So for example, in this case, this uh, proposal has zero votes. So the, the icon here uh, will uh, tell us that uh, it can, it, it, uh, that it will be no accepted because no one voted uh, to accept it. Because of course, as we said, it's a, a malicious behavior for our DFA a malicious behavior which can compromise the business of my decentralized application. But the most important part is that uh, everything can be done just with uh, Ethereum wallet using MetaMask, and it is totally anonymous and totally community driven. So if uh, uh, someone wants to ac accept the behavior, it will vote to accept it, or of course, refute it or not voting. Uh, basing on the uh, rules of the governance of the DFO, which are ruled in this case by, by the, the functionality called the check survey result, someone can uh, decide, the DFO will automatically decide if this pro is the, that proposal uh, can pass, uh, can be accepted or refused. If uh, it, it, it will be uh, accepted, it will appear as a functionality of the uh, DFO hub. So uh, from this uh, front end, you, can, you uh, cannot just watch for uh, existing DFO, you can also create new DFO. For example, if I click here on the new button, I have uh, here this little wizard I can to, I can use to create new DFO. For example, I can, I can create the non-con uh, DFO, uh, which will have a, a, a ENS, uh, a subdomain of dfohub.at, for example, non-con. So my DFO will be available at this address, noncon.dfohub.at. I click next. I choose a symbol for my voting token non C, for example, and uh, create a total supply of voting tokens. So, for example, I can write here uh, 1,000, but of course you can uh, create uh, billions and billions, billions and billions and billions, uh, uh, how much you want. So now, clicking on next, I I can choose between the, gov the governance model of this DFL. There is the standard one or the oddless driven one, which means that everyone uh, before to propose something need to stake their voting tokens. So which means if I really believe in that uh, improvement I uh, I am doing to that DFO, I will of course stake my my tokens for it to let uh, to let prove to the other members of the community in a totally anonymous way, which I will um, I, I am investing in it. Uh, staking my voting tokens, or the community-driven one, which is more interesting because everyone which uh, propose a new proposal, enough, a new functionality, uh, which will be accepted, uh, will receive some voting tokens as a new reward for, uh, for, 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 the, for, for the job he, he made. So uh, as Alessandro said before, we are try to creating startup without founders and the founders are the community itself so everyone can propose something everyone can be paid using voting tokens to let the protocol improve uh, even more and more and more uh, keep in mind that with the FAO you can always create any type of decentralized application and uh, the protocol will help you to easy manage easy improve easy uh, do bug fix on, uh, on that uh, for example I can use the open basic one, uh, so save some uh, some information, like here and here, we will uh, you, we will find all the stuff, uh, all the the, um, the meaning of this stuff in our documentation, which will be released soon. And when I click next, I will say all the resume. And if I click deploy, uh, these are uh, Ethereum transaction, which uh, are step-by-step -step Ethereum transaction, which will uh, guide me to the creation of my DFL. Actually, I will not do it because of uh, a problem of times. But once I deploy my uh, DFL, I will do it during the Q&A session. Uh, once I deployed my new DFL, uh, the DFL will appear in the main DFL app uh, page. And you can navigate as you can navigate these two DFOs, like DFO Hub or uh, if emergency mode. Okay, I think I'm uh, I'm 
I'm okay, Alessandro. Maybe you can uh, start again from your part. Ale? Mm, maybe I'm coming. I'm, I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, um, I, I want to. I want to 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 end this uh, uh, this presentation. Um, Share the screen. Yeah, okay. I'm trying. I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we are currently out, uh, We are currently in beta. Okay, so we are. Um, and uh, um, something that. Uh, uh, and, and if I can, I want to share something that is very uh, incredible, in my opinion, is that um, we have, in, in this moment, uh, we have the, the fronted part on GitHub uh, for, for the next two months because it's easier for us to change. Uh, um, and and I, I talk about the roadmap after. And uh, uh, the most interesting part is, is that everything you see here is not based on some uh, cloud services, but everything is on-chain. Here, this is on-chain. Because we solved a huge problem on the on the Ethereum ecosystem right now, is that when you deploy a smart contract, the human readable part of the smart contract uh, is not on-chain, is on uh, Etherscan servers. So if Etherscan will fail, we can lose it for every dApps that we have. And uh, uh, we have this idea to solve this using base base sixty four, and uh, so when you deploy the smart contract and this smart contract uh, have uh, uh, the same thing in, in the uh, approvable part, you are readable in base sixty four. Uh, you 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 watch everything about this, and you are sure that this code is downloaded directly from the chain, for example. And yeah, uh, the chain is loaded. Uh, obviously, <laughs> it's not like the web too. But uh, is is a way the the centralizer. For example, in this case, you can see here there is no the non fun uh, the base sixty four part, and so we don't know if we trust this. We can have it uh, on Etherscan, but uh, in the future, uh, I think it's unlikely. But uh, uh, we as a community have to work on it as much as we can uh, if. It just kind of will fail. Uh, we have uh, uh, the, uh, with DFOs, we have this emergency uh, plan. And in fact, uh, we will do some stuff on this DFO that is at our emergency mode uh, to, do, to do this kind of things for every smart contract in the Ethereum ecosystem right now. <laughs> so uh, as a demonstration of uh, this, Kind of powerful things, and I want to add uh, another things in the community-driven part of the DFOs um, because this is the most interesting, in my opinion, and uh, is what uh, uh, I, th I think is uh, is the main killer app of this of this idea uh, because uh, um, you can in, in very very quickly uh, you can you can create your own DFO right now. Okay, so it's good. Okay, I have my my domain, mm -hmm. and uh, you can really develop something without need to have um, to have a team or to be to be already founded. You just have to build it because you can you can create this. You can you can you, you can say okay, a part of the token that I am creating for the voting token of DS, DFOs, uh, for example, the ninety percent I put in. Uh, on the DFO wallet, because DFOs have their own wallet and they can manage their um, their coins or tokens in their wallet, and uh, and I can I can create some singular word for for the developing, and this is uh, uh, the roadmap we we have in the in the DFO. And this, this is what we want to achieve as quickly as we can to improve this kind of, uh, of thing. I, I take the link of the roadmap in just a sec. Uh, roadmap here. OK. Uh, because we are in, the, in this phase. And uh, in, our, in our shared vision, and you, and you can watch our, our roadmap on Notion, um, <clears throat> 
Right now, uh, the front end and the, the developing is uh, totally centralized, but we are working on the documentation and the improvement proposal stuff to be totally. Ah, okay, ah, ah, I'm waiting for the <laughs> for the connection. <laughs> um, uh, yes, because I'm on another page now. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, so um, we will build everything as you as you see. For example, the standard that you that you can uh, can choose when you create the FOs are a base standard. Um, but we will have a lot of. Uh, uh, we, we hope that the FOs can create a lot of new um, of new way to govern, like. Uh, reaching, uh, for example, the quadratic voting and stuff in uh, some different ways. And the improvement proposal um, will, uh, will, uh, will be very important to not push us the way that people will govern the FOs, but to, um, to be the community that will choose the, the standards to, to govern and the, the best governing part. Um, I, I think I can, ah, okay, 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 it's my fault. It's my fault, totally my fault. Sorry. I'm stressed when I have to talk uh, <laughs> conference and stuff. <laughs> um, and um, this, for example, is our roadmap. As I, as I told before, we, we are working on documentation and improvement proposal part. And uh, we have something that is very interesting for the 1.0 version, like the task management. So you can create a DFO. And you can uh, uh, have some tasks, for example, that you that you need to do, uh, and you can push this task like uh, like in Bitcoin, and um, people can uh, can uh, do this task and reach the the funding for this task, for example. But the most interesting thing is that uh, when people deliver the task, the task automatically create a proposal. And so token holder can vote if this task is okay and we and they want to add it on their TFO or not. And this is totally cool because it's removed totally the need of uh, of an entity to to run the application. And uh, one other interesting part uh, in the future will be the idea of IDOs. So um, the IDOs is uh, it's, uh, in my personal opinion the uh the natural evolution of ICOs but do well uh because the idea is that uh, if you have uh, um a dap that is already working and uh, you know the governance standard you know that you can um be part of the developing uh you don't don't need to know who developed this application you don't need to trust an entity or um, or a team. So you can invest, uh, uh, for example, anonymously in this application, and uh, and you can schedule how this money will be um, used for using tasks, not uh, uh, to the money go in the in the wallet of someone and they spend uh, whenever they want. So I think that this can be um, a new way to fund startups that are already working for in this example, uh, without the points of failure of the ICO. So the well-known organization that you have to trust it. And uh, um, there is another important thing uh, that uh, that I want to share. For example, is uh, um, uh, to understand this kind of idea. Um, in my opinion, uh, the best project in the Ethereum ecosystem is ENS, so the Ethereum name services. And uh, um, for example, when you have a, a name, Ethereum name service and you um, we renew this Ethereum name service for at least I don't know one, two, three, four, five years, um, you spend some Ethereum, and this Ethereum will go uh, in the non-profit foundation of uh, uh, people that have built ENS, and they will spend this money in R and D's, and this this is good for now. Uh, but um, how if, uh, for example, ENS uh, can be an, an IDO, for example? So when you um, spend your Ethereum to renew your, your uh, ENS, they don't need to have a foundation. And uh, all of this money uh, will be voted by the token holder to choose uh, the tasks 
and staff uh, on uh, improving. And this can be very helpful, for example, for teams like ENS and staff to manage these kind of things without need to uh, verify that they are good and this kind of stuff, but totally on chain and totally in a secure way. And uh, I think uh, uh, this can be something very interesting in the Ethereum community. And uh, we are we are obviously in beta, so uh, we will have a lot, a lot of technical challenges and bugs and stuff in the future. Uh, like everything is the is the is the in, in the first phase, but there is one thing that nobody has in the in the field: the possibility of uh, uh, with microservices oriented the developing. Uh, to change the small bugged part in uh, in the smart contracts, and this is actually very cool to um, have a fast developing for DApps in the future, and without need to spend a lot of money to companies that uh, verify the smart contract and stuff. So time, money, and especially uh, one of the most things that we want to uh, challenge is how much money you need to start a startup in the, in the Ethereum ecosystem right now. Because it seems that it's easy, but for regulation things and for um, designing things of dApps, it's very, very costly. And we want to make as cheaper as possible, like, like zero, for example. And so this is our R&D, and this is our um, idea, and uh, uh, now in the mainnet, uh, DFO, basically. And uh, you can, uh, I return to the, uh, to the presentation, to end this. I don't know if you, ah, okay, we made, we, <laughs> okay, we talked for a lot of times, <laughs> for a lot of time, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> We try to be faster as possible, but uh, we have to improve this. Uh, it's okay. And this is, uh, for example, the the, the guitar um, the guitar uh, chat. If you want to enjoy us in the developing, um, the GitHub, the dfwap.com to reach the explanation and the documentation in the future. And uh, I remove my camera. The DFO hub .ethereum, that is uh, uh, where the application is. Thank you. I'm sorry because we talk a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. That was incredibly interesting. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, Matteo shared the link to um, the, the site in the MetaTrack channel because Stefan was asking. Um, okay, so Stefan has a question. There we go. You can go, Stefan. Just unmute yourself. Stefan, I can't unmute you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can okay. you hear me now? Yes. yes. Uh, I'm still getting used to this new interfaces, you know. So, <laughs> thank you. That was a, a very nice presentation and, and a great project. Um, I'm just thinking... I mean, we, we have some projects on Ethereum already, which, in my opinion, come pretty close to that. But I think you guys have, have really made a very good job at combining uh, new bits and pieces. And um, that's that's great to see. So I, I just want to thank you. And um, my my main question, and I'm, I'm, I know it's a bit unfair because you've been you've been stressing the the um, censorship resistance and the anonymity a lot. Yeah? But um, if you want, or if someone wants to, uh, w one of those decentralized organizations to interact with the so-called real world, you, we at least have to think about what, what could be possible relations to a legal system, for example. Have, yeah. you, have you given any thoughts on that? Or do you see this as completely separate um, discussion okay. yeah um, I think I think this is a this is a great question this is a very very great question um, the problem um, I, I want to start with the, the observation that the, the 
uh, this is technologically possible. So uh, if we don't research on it, someone will research on it in the future. So if it if it's if it's uh, uh, possible by coding on Ethereum, uh, everyone can do it. So, and uh, there is uh, a lot of things about that. I think that uh, mm, I, I'm interesting to see what people want. So I think that, uh, for example, yes, you you can build DApps anonymously, but uh, you as a person um, are in a country and so police can take you so um if you if you do something that is very bad for example but if you don't uh, but um, at the same time this can improve developing and i think that in uh, the ethereum ecosystem what we need today is to try to develop a lot of things uh, as easier as possible as fast as possible as uh, secure uh, as possible to reach killer apps because there is a lot of things to try to to make on Ethereum. There is a, a ton of opportunity that I can't um, figure it out. For example, right now, and uh, I think that we need uh, um, a standardized security, a high standardized security of independency from DApps to the to the to the creators uh, to reach. Uh, all of the people in the crypto space to use DApps because this is uh, um, what, for example, um, I'm. Uh, this, this is wh wh why, for example, I'm afraid to use uh, uh, MakerDAO because I think, uh, um, for example, about the failure of the MakerDAO Foundation and uh, like, like uh, uh, Vlad tweeted about it too. That this is possible. This, this is a trend, and we can do it more and we can do it uh, uh, easier, in my opinion. About the people that want to do bad stuff like pedopornography, uh, drugs, and stuff, um, I think that in the future maybe uh, people can create, for example, decentralized Twitter, for example. Uh, but uh, uh, they can create something like uh, uh, DAOs based uh, transfer community. So, for example, it is not about only censor the information because the information are on chain, but is to censor the viewing of the information. So, for example, uh, people can uh, can create a front end uh, for a DFO. Uh, for example, this is what can happen, but I don't know what will happen. And uh, and they can choose that if the community want to censor a pedopornography stuff, they can. Uh, but this is surely a way better than what is happening today, uh, for example, on the social media. Uh, because in the social media, we have an entity that can censor things. So they can use the excuse of pedopornography to censor uh, political stuff. I, 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 I don't think they are doing right now, but it, uh, the main uh, bad things is they can. So if they can, it's not okay. And um, so, and uh, another thing so that is, uh, so I, I, and I think the community can work better to censor uh, bad things rather than a, a single entity. And they can create a crypto economic to do it and a lot of things. So I, I'm not totally afraid of it, uh, but uh, the problem in the problem uh, is that uh, we can even if we didn't develop the DFO hub or the DFO in general, uh, we can't. Uh, um, uh, we this is the. Uh, I think this is the hard trend of DApps in the future, and we can't stop it. So the only way to to do it as well uh, is to start make it, and uh, to solve all. Uh, and to let uh, DFOs communities to solve all of the issues uh, on on the go, uh, because uh, I think if we can do it uh, on Ethereum and uh, someone will do it, uh, this is basically uh, my answer of this question. But this is a good question, and we talk about a lot about this. Thank. You. Awesome. Do we have any other? No. <laughs> um, I think you guys 
if you guys are in the MetaTrack uh, Discord chat anyway, um, Mateo has shared some links, uh, and also I think we you can continue the conversation in there a little bit. Um, but this is a question. Hey, hi, Leo. Uh, How's question it going? <laughs> good, good. And you? Good, good thank you. Uh, sorry for the interruption, but uh, I, I would like to uh, um, ask uh, um, a thing. Uh, it, it's possible? Yes, yes, yes. We have 10 minutes. You're good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I really like your project, and I think that uh, um, unstoppable applications is the essence of Ethereum right now. So for the moment, uh, the most important project is uh, MakerDAO uh, for, um, in, in the DAO area of Ethereum. But I think that MakerDAO, uh, have you, as you said, is um, uh, has an important failure that is uh, governance right now. So uh, DFO Hub, is uh, our ex, ex, um, is uh, a generic uh, uh, DAO project with no um, with no specialization right now. So, yeah. it's possible to create uh, a new maker DAO uh, with a uh, um, with a no with a no no stop exactly no stoppable maker DAO right now with your framework. Yeah, is it possible? And uh, is it possible to work uh, um, to an open source version of uh, of MakerDAO, for example? Com and, community uh, driven and, version. Yeah, and an open source too, <laughs> for in some ways, like like for example, um, and, uh, and 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 I think that uh, um, and this is my personal opinion, and maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but I see, and this is not the DFO opinion, but uh, I think that uh, the the only point of failure of MakerDAO is the business perspective, uh, because this MakerDAO is it, uh, if uh, uh, MakerDAO and I really love technology and I really love the, the concept of of, of uh, how we build a stable coin um, is about uh, uh, the it, 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 this is why I love projects like ENS rather than MakerDAO uh, because the business side um, of MakerDAO. Can uh, can create um, can create uh, yes um, a very fast developing a very fast uh, um, uh, uh, using of it, but um, I think I, I don't know if anyone uh, anyone here uh, thinks as me, but uh, if I think as as an ENS, I think uh, this is. Uh, uh, something that I can trust for 100, 200 years from now. Right, right. Uh, MakerDAO, I think something that is a good technology, is very cool, uh, but is not something that I can trust for 100, 200, 300 years from now. And I think that this is important in the blockchain ecosystem. Because and, it's, uh, MakerDAO, I think that is similar uh, to um, Silicon Valley project. Is uh, I think yeah. is uh, uh, is in part uh, blockchain, and the other part is uh, like a Silicon Valley project. So from like Facebook, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think we are experimenting a lot of business uh, and uh, and developing things in, uh, in the Ethereum community. For example, uh, we experimented the ICO bubble in 2017. And so we learned how to use token, how to don't use token, how to do stuff. And so um, the, something that is very incredible in this community and uh, is how fast and how good is experimenting things. And so I, 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 I when, for example, um, uh, I, I love the project of the fork of MakerDAO on, um, on top of uh, a MolkDAO. That is MetaCoin, I think. It's MetaCoin, right? Yeah. And uh, and and I think we we would have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, of fork of MakerDAO too. And and, and let's see, I, I would be happy to see a MakerDAO fork on DFO, for example, this kind of stuff. Is it, uh, last last uh, answer a uh, question? Um, is for you uh, in, in the future um, there will be uh, um, governance uh, ICO bubble like ICO bubble? Uh, 
<laughs> so you, you mean in DAOs or you mean DeFi ecosystem or you mean ICOs? In, or... the, in the Ethereum ecosystem, because uh, I, I see a lot of uh, Silicon Valley investors that are buying a lot of uh, governance uh, token in uh, Ethereum mm. last period. So uh, I, I think I that think... Uh, the this is possible <laughs> for you. I, I would be happy if this will not happen ever. <laughs> Another bubble, and uh, um, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I am only interested in working in something that I can see from one to three hundred from now, and this kind of projects. Uh, and uh, yes, I'm pretty sexist in a project that uh, I can see for. 100 200 years from now okay. and uh, and so uh, but i i don't i i, I don't want to 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 talk bad uh, or to make uh, pro prophetic uh, things uh, about other projects and, and stuff okay thank you i really like your project <laughs> thank you thank you uh before to leave i want to show you the, the just the last thing uh, with, uh, just a little surprise for you i will show you my screen because actually I am creating a new decentralized flexible organization, which will, is, is called NonCon, uh, and we minted uh, uh, 10 million tokens. It, uh, it will have uh, the community-driven governance rules, so we staked inside the DFO 5 million of these NonCon tokens, and everyone can propose and, uh, new functionalities for this uh, um, decentralized flexible organization, and uh, we can um, we can uh, uh, you will will receive ten non-con coins every time you propose a new functionality. So that's it.